Welcome to Community Corner. Community Corner is basically a project that seeks to um, recognize and celebrate citizens within the community, within Ward 3, who are bringing about important changes or who have uh, caused something in the community, a positive change. And my name is Rashmi, and I'm a summer co-op student at Councilor Ms. Fonseca's office. And today I'm here to interview Randy Atwood, who is a celebrated local astronomer who has dedicated almost 30 years of his life to astronomy and space science. So we are so honored to have you. Great, thanks for coming. Great to talk to you, Rashmi. And we're just going to ask you a couple of questions so we can introduce you. Sure. So when did you know that you were destined to study astronomy? Well, it was the uh, around the summer of 1969. I was uh, totally enthralled with the Apollo moon landings. Um, I would go to school and stand up and talk all about them, and the teacher would look at me as if, you know, like, who is this kid? Is he working for NASA kind of thing? And so I kept scrapbooks. I made models and uh, would just followed the Apollo um, night and day. So that really transfixed me on space and space exploration. And then about uh, a year later, there was a, an eclipse of the sun visible in, in March 1970 from, uh, from southern Ontario. And uh, so I made the proper um, observing uh, kit to observe that. And I thought this is really, really cool. So astronomy and space, I was pretty well hooked. That's pretty amazing. And could you name some impactful moments in your career that changed how you saw things? Uh, well, I, th I think, you know, everyone's, you know, career over, you know, as you say, 30 years or, or 40 years of, of doing something like this, you're, you're always building upon your knowledge. And so it's, you know, it's my parents who supported me, it's teachers who supported me. And then over time, I've met people who have uh, inspired me, who say worked on the Apollo program or worked on the space shuttle program. These are very smart people. Uh, and just seeing how they live their lives, you can't help but be inspired. It can't help to but change your life. Uh, I've always been interested in teaching as well. I never became a teacher. I actually got into uh, information technology, did that for 30 years. Uh, but I was thinking about teaching, but all through my life, I always tended towards teaching jobs, either teaching people how to use software or teaching people about astronomy. So. I think as you, as you go through life, these different experiences tend to funnel you uh, to do certain things based on what you really enjoy doing. So you draw your inspiration from all these people who have lived their lives. Is that where you draw your inspiration? Oh yeah, you can't you can't help but uh, you know after you say meet uh, like I met met the, our Canadian astronauts. You talk about people who are are motivated, ambitious, and career driven. I mean, <laughs> every time I meet a, a, an astronaut. Uh, afterwards, I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, what a failure, my! You look at what this person's done, but I mean, these are super, super people, and you can't help but at least try to change your life a little bit based on, on what they do and and how they live live their lives. Absolutely. And what type of changes would you like to bring into our community? What are your long term goals? Well, as you say, I'm I'm, I'm interested in teaching. I'm interested in mentoring. Uh, I think what. I and the organizations that I've brought into the the, the community, the Royal Astronomical Society, the local astronomy club, and also the Earthshine group, the not-for-profit uh, education group that I've started. I think our goals are to uh, to bring awareness to the community. Uh, astronomy and space exploration are things that kids in grade six are just are passionate about. I mean, it's in the curriculum. Uh, they really enjoy it. So the the programs that we run, where, where families can come out and uh, look through telescopes and learn about astronomy. Uh, that, to me, is, uh, is something that's very valuable. Um, I feel that young people, especially like the one or two percent who are going to go into, into uh, science and technology, uh, they need to be inspired, they need to be mentored through that, uh, that phase. And I think that's a, they're very special and they, they need this, uh, this attention. So I hope someday to be able to ha set up something formally where uh, these young people can uh, can can get this this kind of attention. But one major aspect, of, uh, in, as well as inspiring young people to get into science and technology, is is just science literacy. I think it, it's so important for people in general to be literate. I mean, we're in a technolo technological age. We're in a scientific age, and it, it bothers me as a as a science educator 
the, the people, we just, I think in general, the public should be more science literate. It, it, it would help them with their daily lives and making decisions. And so that's a, it's a long hill to climb, but I think it's important. So do you think there need to be more changes to the curriculum? Our school curriculum, as far as astronomy is concerned. Uh, no, right now you've, there's uh, astronomy and space exploration grade uh, six and nine, and in part in grade twelve. I think that's great. Um, back in 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 the year two thousand, when I was the national president of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, that's when the curriculum changed, and the teachers there was a great need to help teachers with science, uh, with uh, lesson planning and astronomy, because you know the basically the, the what the curriculum was asking them to teach was a little bit, it was a challenge. Um, I think where I'd like to go with that, I mean, I think the curriculum is fine, but where I'd like to go is to see some sort of facility in the Western GTA which could uh, serve teachers, group, um, youth groups, and provide a little bit more formal um, awareness of astronomy and space science whether that in, involves a, a small science center or a technology museum or even something with an observatory and a planetarium. I don't know, we're trying to scope that out right now. But uh, with our, our monthly sessions at Riverwood, uh, where families come out and look through the telescopes and, and young people are just amazed, and well, adults too, when they see Saturn for the first time. And it always inspires young people to come up with questions. And uh, at the, our last session, uh, uh, a 12 year old girl had just got a telescope for her birthday and her mother you know tried to show her how it worked didn't know within two minutes we had her finding Saturn and Mars and the moon and, and she was just squealing I mean, it was just the greatest day of her life so that's the kind of thing I think we can bring to the community and it's just it's it's just trying to improve people's lives through uh, understanding awareness of the universe and it's certainly something that you know families can do together yeah. for free and uh, you know what? What could be better than discovering the universe with your friends and family? Absolutely. What message would you like to give out to budding astronomers or kids out there? Uh, <clears throat> well, I mean, I, I guess it's uh, when when I was growing up, there wasn't the internet. There weren't all these opportunities. You sort of dug for this information. Right now, with the internet. Uh, social media it's just you know like the the curiosity landing on Mars the other day I mean everything was available immediately so if anyone who's interested in space or technology or science there's a tremendous amount of resources out there uh, I would say follow your dream uh, you know what really turns you on and then talk to your teachers talk to your parents because there's a, there are a lot of people out there who are, will be willing to, uh, to help you uh, reach your goals. And you know, there are no goals that are, are too high these days. I mean, if you, if you want to be the first person to go back to the moon uh, or off to an asteroid, I mean, Canada is going to be involved with, uh, with these trips. Uh, it's going to be, there's going to be international cooperation. Uh, Mars may be about 30 to 40 years away, but certainly uh, there will be opportunities for people to, if you're not going to be an astronaut, at least be the people who help to build the spacecraft that go there, or the scientists who do the analysis of, of all the data. What are your personal ethics as far as career is concerned? Because, yeah. Uh, okay, you're going to have to rephrase that. My, my like, what qualities do you think you need to have if you want to succeed in this field? Oh, okay. Um, I, the, the people, the astronomers, the scientists I've met who uh, are the most successful are the ones who are curious and passionate. Uh, they're, um, they're interested in not only learning about these things but also sharing it with others. Um, I had an opportunity once to meet, uh, meet Carl Sagan who has impressed me as like the, the, the most uh, He's sort of the spokesman for uh, uh, for science and technology, and just the the interest in learning. And then uh, recently, I met, uh, interviewed Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's sort of up and coming as a, an astronomer, who's uh, uh, another pu person in the public who is uh, inspiring people to learn about science. These are people uh, who I think really bring forward, uh, you know, the, the interesting aspects of, of science. And so, if you uh, are curious and uh, passionate uh, about learning things, then you shouldn't have any problem in, uh, in a career in, in science and technology. Okay, but clearly your passion and curiosity has brought you so far. So how does it feel to have an asteroid named after you? 
Well, it's really uh, it's really an honor, you know, the um, uh, to think that there's a, a piece of rock out there, uh, out beyond Mars, you know, about two to three kilometers in size. Uh, fortunately not headed towards the earth uh, that is made out of either a stony material or iron nickel material uh, that's been out there since the beginning of the solar system with my name on it it's great I think it's a it's it's a nice reflection of, uh, of what I've tried to do which is um, inspire people educate people about about space and astronomy so uh, uh, I'm, it's just still sinking in you know I'm talking to other people who I talked. I met actually met the discoverer uh, a few days ago, and uh, we had a nice chat about what was involved. It's 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 not easy to see. It's it's about a million times fainter than the faintest star you can see, not in Mississauga, but way far away from City Light. So I mean, it's going to be a challenge to photograph it, but hopefully I'll be able to try and photograph it myself someday. Hope so. Uh, so on a final note: How could citizens within that community become involved in your program? Maybe you could talk a little about your um, program at the Riverwood Stargate. Uh, well, we, we run a, a, a monthly program at Riverwood, uh, so we encourage people to come out and, you know, if they've got their own telescopes, bring them out, but certainly come out, bring binoculars. Uh, we show people the sky, we show them different constellations and stars. We always schedule it for a night when the moon is out, and if there are any planets out, we look at them as well. Um, and it's just an opportunity to chat with people uh, in the Astronomical Society who have interests, who can, you know, sort of answer questions. Uh, but an evening like that, it sort of inspires people to sort of look at themselves and look at all of us and where we are in the universe and sort of ask those big questions, you know, like who, where, why, and, you know, what's it all about. Um, what we hope to be able to do is build a, uh, uh, a I guess, a following uh, behind what we're doing. Uh, through social media, through a Facebook page and uh, Twitter account and websites, uh, to see if there is an interest in going further than Riverwood, and that is, uh, you know, is there an interest in uh, a permanent facility within the city where, uh, you know, a mini science center or a technological uh, museum, uh, where people could come and uh, do this on a more formal basis? Um, so, um, I guess that's the first thing to do would be go to the Riverwood website or the uh, RASC website and uh, come out and, uh, and meet us at, uh, at Riverwood. Well, it's been amazing meeting someone like you and it's, uh, it's an honor meeting you and good to know that there are people like you bringing all these changes within the community. So I wish you the best of things. Thank you, Asher. It's been a pleasure.